So the one thing I've learned in my 29 year career practicing rural generalist medicine is I may bring the expertise and knowledge into the domain of medicine, but by no means am I the expert in managing patients. Patients know what they need and they know what they deserve. And I really believe that having patients and communities, citizens as partners in helping appreciate where the gaps are in their own individual community uh, within their region or possibly within their own journey in healthcare. I think it's really important that we uh, take a step back, uh, consider those needs and sit down, remove the um, assumption that there's a power struggle around how we design healthcare services for communities and regions and have the partners willingly agree upon what services are necessary. Then and then, only then do I believe that we're going to uh, address the needs of underserved, uh, impoverished uh, citizens and communities, and truly uplift the well-being of citizens throughout British Columbia. That's my thoughts, that's my message. Hi, I'm Robin Redwich, and I'm a psychiatrist in Duncan, BC, but uh, this story starts when I was 21 years old, and I'm a student nurse on my shift second year, and I'm with uh, 35 men who've been there for most of their adult lives and I'm the only staff there because that's how we were staffed So it's two o'clock in the morning I've got this little pool of light and this guy comes out of the dark and he's been looking for me and he's gonna hurt me uh, But behind him all of a sudden looms this Huge man tiny we called him and he said what are you doing to this guy? And the guy says nothing. He said go back to bed So there I was scared and then saved and I thought oh, I thought I was alone I'm not alone. And that's, that's my point, we're not alone. So what I want to know is, how can we now reach out to our public, the people, and join with them, have them join with us to create wellness and health? That, that's our question, that's what we have to do. That's the third wave of the in, uh, IHI. And so I want Tiny to come out of my past and help me remember that the people that we're working for are the ones who are gonna lead us into a healthy and well society. So I think this is really important and again, um, bringing it back to an Indigenous lens, I think we need to start having a healthcare system at all levels be driven by community members. And then large part because we are community members ourselves as providers, that, that does include us. Um, but we have to be starting to collect data and metrics that, and then acting on them from patients. So every single time a patient gets a prescription filled, goes into the hospital, sees their family doctor, they should have a little you know even a one question um, survey about like how is this care for you how could we have done better um, what did you especially like um, and have a commitment from all levels of the healthcare system that we are going to act on major themes that come from that data collection and feed that back to the public so that they know we're acting on the data that we're getting. Um, I think we all, and myself included, really like to think that we know what's best, but our whole point of being here is to improve the health of um, British Columbians in all facets, in all areas of the um, province. And I think um, because we're not asking continuously, a lot of times, yeah, we have data from the public, but 
it was six years old. And so the needs and wants may have changed by now. And so we need to be better at collecting it time, like in a timely manner and acting on it. And therefore we need people like data analysts and, and um, I don't even know who else because I know so little about this, but we need more people to be able to collect it, analyze it and feed it back in a timely manner. Often in healthcare, we talk about accountability and we think we have to develop structures that we're accountable up to an organization, but really we're accountable to each other and to the people that we serve and work with. So if we could bring people together as they're planning so that we're accountable to each other, and as we uh, look at our successes and look at ways that we can improve, that we come together with providers, with administrators, with community members, and we can talk and have dialogue and, and work together and be accountable to that. I think it'll work. Um, there's an opportunity for us to change, change the way we plan and uh, meet the needs of the communities. I think we have a lot of wisdom that's here and I think there's the opportunity to build on that and start to hold when we talk about that accountability piece rather than just coming together and putting things on a piece of paper and walking away and thinking that somebody else is going to take that ball and run that as we say there is no system you are the system we all need to take some responsibility especially those of us that are being paid to do this work and have the the honor of being in positions of privilege that we need to respect that and uh, contribute in the best ways that we can. I think including patients, uh, community members, citizens in the transformation process of healthcare is integral. How do we do that effectively? How do we get people who are in the system to be part of that decision-making process? I don't totally know the answer, but I think that to have practitioners and policymakers and administrators truly understand um, what it's like to be um, a patient will help that process because I think it changes the way you make decisions when you understand what it's like to be that person in the bed or in the wheelchair or going through the system from different provider to different provider and having um, trying to have that uh, care kind of wrapped around you to understand what's really going on. Um, so I think that it's one of the fundamental things that we need to do first and foremost is really get engaged people um, being part of this transformation. The First Nations Health Authority is a health authority by First Nations people for First Nations people. And First Nations people are not just a series of communities uh, who have a stake in healthcare. Uh, we have our own health authority. We are um, one of the founding nations and have a distinct status in Canada. We have the worst outcomes of any ethnic group uh, in the country. Uh, and uh, we have rights and title uh, as protected by the constitution as the original inhabitants of, of this land. And the First Nations Health Authority is really um, uh, a self-determining step where we have said we have skin in the game, these are our members, uh, we uh, look after them and we help uh, with the work of health. Uh, and so um, one of the messages that I've been trying to bring to you today is First Nations will be at the table as we transform the healthcare system in BC. Uh, so I hear from First Nations patients a lot uh, one of my most memorable experiences was when uh, a baby had died and we were speaking to uh, coroners about the timely return of that infant body back to the village, to the family. And uh, the coroner was explaining what their rights were by law, <laughs> the BC Coroners Act. And our chief said, uh, we know you think you're in charge, but we think that's our baby. And it uh, really reminded me that uh, you know, these are our bodies, these are our children. Uh, we have to have a place at the table, we have to have a say. And I think that's the case for, for all patients. And sometimes when we're looking at the healthcare system, uh, we make the healthcare workers the star of the show. And I, I just disagree with that. Anyway, I, I do think that improvement in the healthcare system uh, actually has to place the community at the center, not just have the patient voice, but put communities at center. And, and we as uh, physicians and clinicians um, have to um, 
I think sometimes physicians and clinicians think only of, of healthcare as happening uh, in their offices or in their hospitals. And my focus is very much about care uh, in the community. Communities are looking after themselves. We are health partners, not the center of healthcare. Uh, so how do we adjust what we do and know uh, so that we're situated perfectly in community? I think that's the work. So this has been a very exciting time at this Providers Conference. It's been great to hear all the different ideas as to how we can improve the healthcare system. As co-chair of the GP Services Committee for the Doctors of BC, I'm so privileged to be involved in this work. So just to give people an overview, what are we trying to do? We are trying to make sure that the citizens of British Columbia have access to health care when they need it. They have a family doctor that they can call their own. And we're trying to integrate all the services that are just silos right now. So where do people go when they want health care? They go to their family doctor's office. So one of the things we're doing with the patient medical home is we're trying to upgrade the family doctor's office to be more than what patients would get at a walk-in clinic. We want there to be continuity of care, coordination, comprehensiveness. We want to have a team of doctors that you don't have to provide every service, but as a team, you can give those services that are needed in the community. And then we can take the various doctors and their patient medical homes and connect them to other patient medical homes. So again, the services can be broader. And then we want to add in the allied health providers. And that's where the primary care network comes in. There's many of these allied health providers that provide services that are coordinated by the health authorities. Think of the patient at the center of a concentric circle, patient and their family. And then think of the patient medical home wrapped around the patient. And then wrapped around the patient medical home is this primary care network with our system of providers, our team-based care. And then we have connections to our community specialists because so many of our patients are having their health care needs met in the family doctor's office, in the patient medical home. But many of our complex patients have regular connections to specialists. So we need them involved in this whole system as well. We need to have connections to residential care. We need to have connections to the acute care hospital. So this is a whole target operating model that we talk about, but it's trying to get rid of the silos, have the family doctor's office or the patient medical home, as we're calling it, as the foundational unit, everything else wrapped around it, and coordination will actually happen from there. Patients will go out and come back, but somebody will actually have all the information. The patient will know where to go when they need help and if they need other services. So it's a great vision that we have, but are the patients, are the citizens in British Columbia understanding what we're trying to do? We want to make sure that there's longitudinal care, that there's a relationship with their doctor and with the rest of the team. So bear with us, it's taking time. We're moving a little bit at a time, but this is not a project. This is a transformation. This is how the system is going to be into the future. <music>